Hello, Davina here again and welcome to another tutorial from UsefulGraphicDesignTutorials.com Today I will show you how to create a header for a WordPress site like the one I did earlier and this is on my site. During the process we'll be using a radial gradient we will be putting some text on with a bit of blur and we'll also be using the align tool. So how do we do this? Now, Okay, so we've got a brand new page. First of all, I'm going to take the page off. So I go to File, Document Properties and click off on the border and it's gone. Next we need to create a rectangle and select it and I'm going to put in the size of the WordPress header and it is 940 pixels wide by 198 high. Okay, it's a bit small so we'll use a magnifying glass and zoom out a bit. That should do. What we're going to do now is use the gradient tool and create a radial gradient. That's the second one there. And I'm just going to start from the middle and do that. And you can move it about, in, out, shake it all about. Well, quite. We'll have that. We're going to change the colour. And there's a couple of ways of doing it, but provided one of these two little circles are highlighted, we can come down to the palette here and, well, what should we do? Click on that. Well, actually, you can't see it very well, so let's click on that. Or you may want to change the middle one. It's a square, so if we... Do that and click on that, and that looks quite nice. You'll note along here that this is the tool control bar for the gradient tool. And you can see that we do have a gradient going from dark to light and an editor. And I'm going to click on this and the gradient editor comes up. What I want to have a look at at the moment is the opacity and for the middle, I want to show you how you can alter that. So you've got so many choices of colours. At the moment, it is opaque. But if we click here, you can see gradually it's getting lighter and lighter until it's white. And could it put it back up to there. Up the top here, you will see something stop 3134. Stop actually means colour and there's a drop down and there's two. We've had a look at that one, we're now going to have a look at that one. And you could tell you're on it because the colour's here. The same applies, this is opaque, but if we move that down, and that can be as well. I'm going to move it back up. I'm going to come out of there. I think that's a little bit dark. So I'm going to, oops. Shouldn't have done that. Good old editor. Come back to it. Uh, I should have done that, shouldn't I? Is that? No, it's the same colour. So we'll have that one. As I say, you can play around with it and do whatever you want to do. You can also have another stop, which is another colour. Double click on here. And this is now a diamond, change of colour, have that highlighted, and let's go really mad and do that. And if you move this one, you can in and out, around, in, do all sorts of things that you want. I'm going to, you can see up here, can't you, that we've now got three, and I'm going to the editor, and if we don't want that third stop, make sure it's selected up here and you can tell 
I think the order is the top one is the middle and then you're going out towards the outside. So it's the middle one. As long as that's clicked and then delete stop, it's gone. I'm going to change the colour of the middle. It's, it's too dark for what I want. So let's go up to here and yes, that's quite nice. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Like that. Right, so we've got the, the gradient sorted. Next thing is the text. So we go to the text tool, click on there and type. And I'm going to put welcome to my website. As you see, it's defaulted black and sans. And we're going to change it up at the text palette. And to save a bit of time, I'm going to choose Myriad Pro. There it is. And it's changed it there. We want it there, so apply, and it's come down there. I'm going to move that into the middle and resize the text. Not too worried about the alignment at the moment because we'll use the alignment tool in a minute. But what I am going to do is I'm going to change the colour of black. It's too harsh for what I want. So we've selected it and that'll do, that one there. I just want something to, to give a bit of definition. I'm now going to du duplicate it. And if you remember, duplicate or control D. I'm now going to change that colour to, yes, why not? I want it to be a little bit bigger to show you what is happening. Because what I want to do now, it's as I said before in duplicate, the duplicate is now on top of the original. And so we want to move it down. And I use the arrow keys. Something like that. What I want to do is blur the dark bit to create a sense of shadow. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky in selecting because we've got to select it. So back up to the magnifying glass, keep going quite big, I think. And there is a, a useful tip. If I select on that, I've, I've selected the background. You can't see it because it's big. But if I then click on the tab key and keep going through, that will have taken me to the dark one. That will have taken me to the light one. And we're back to background. So if I do it once more, I think I'm on that dark text. And the way to check is to go up to fill and stroke. And yes, you can tell, match the colors up. So I'm going to blur it probably that way. One should be enough. It's easy obviously to select the top one because you've got plenty to choose from. I'm a little bit, I wanted, yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's come out. I think it's uh, too light and too dark. That is a very simple um, web header, but of course what we've got to do now is bring in the page because we want to save it. So file, document properties, and I'm going to put in the 940 pixels for the width and the 198 for the height and show the page border again. And it should be down here somewhere. It is. What we need to do now is to bring all this down here. So we'll do it at two stages. Click on the background, click and drag. Now I'm not too worried about lining it up because I'm going to do that with the alignment tool. And this is the one up here. Click on there and the alignment and distribution box comes in. You will see a line relative to, we've got page there because that's what we want to align to, but there's a, a variety and you can decide whichever you want, but we're going with page and we want to center it vertically and also center it horizontally. 
and it's neatly gone into the box. We're going to do the same, bring those down. Uh, but we've obviously got to group it together because they're nicely aligned together. So I want to group those. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go up to here and click select all objects or nodes or control A. And that selects everything. But it's also selected the background down here. I don't want that. So if you hold shift and click on it, it deselects that but leaves these two together. And you can see the two jagged lines. And then go up to the grouping icon here or control G and click there and they're both selected. You have lost the blur or you appear to have lost the blur. You haven't. But this is what happens whilst they're grouped. So I'm going to click and drag. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, align this to the page. So it's that selected. Go up to the line align tool, pages there, and I'm going to align on the vertical, and that's put it in the middle, and the horizontal. I want it a little bit further down, so I just make sure it's selected, and then the arrow key, I'm just going to move it down to where I want it, and as you see, the blur is back and just to prove I'll take you in yeah and that is your web banner created don't forget that you need to save it up to file save as and it's whatever you're going to call it or wherever you want it dot svg that is the vector saving and then for the web or print, you then go to export and bitmap and you will see this page here. If you want further details on how to save, there is a tutorial in the series on saving. So go and have a look at that. Well, I hope you again found this useful. If you do have any comments or questions, please come and pop them on our fan page on Facebook. We'd really like to, to hear from you to see what you think, whether we're a load of rubbish, whether we're even better than sliced bread. Come and have a chat. The details you can see below. So until the next tutorial, bye bye.